First round action from the Midwest Regional continues in Buffalo. And it's the 12th seed Richmond Spiders against the number five seed, the Hawkeyes of Iowa. The winner advances to take on the Providence Friars who won about an hour ago over South Dakota State. Welcome back to Buffalo, everybody. Brad Nessler with Brendan Haywood. Evan Washburn is courtside. Coming into this game, a team that had to win four games in four days in the A-10 in Richmond. Same story for Iowa in the Big Ten tourney. And in the Big Ten for the Iowa Hawkeyes, we got a bona fide superstar on this one. Listen, when it comes to bona fide <laughs> superstars, it doesn't get much bigger than Keegan Murray. This kid can flat out score from all over the court. He's what I like to call a three-level scorer. You see him taking it there to the basket, but he can also stroke it from three, and he's money in the mid-range. It can post up. NBA scouts are salivating over this guy's talent, and I can see why. Part of the starting lineups presented by Wendy's, obviously, is Keegan Murray, Jordan Bohannon leading the way, Jacob Gilliard, another outstanding guard. With more on that, let's check in with Evan. Yeah, Brad, a bit of history at that point guard matchup in this game. You've got two of the most experienced college basketball players of all time, Jacob Gilliard, played the most minutes of any player and then you've got Jordan Bohannon who's played more games than any other player in college basketball spoke to both guys about it yesterday they've never met but they've got mutual respect for each other's journey and their game Gilliard telling me about Bohannon you can't let him loose especially late in the game and they all know with Gilliard he can steal it at any moment Gilliard uh, grad student out of Kansas City and Bohannon the senior out of Marion Iowa. Patrick Adams, David Hall, Clarence Armstrong, our officials. And Keegan Murray set to jump center with Grant Golden. Game two of four here in Buffalo. And here we go. It'll be the Hawkeyes ball to start things off. Tony Perkins into the front court. Patrick McCaffrey, one of the two brothers that will see action today with the opening salvo, missed it. Iowa keeps it alive with the offensive rebound. Perkins misses off the window. And Golden with a rebound. Two good looks for Iowa. Couldn't get it to go down, though. Yep. Here's the Spiders from the A-10. 23 and 12 coming in. After winning their conference tournament, inside they go to Tyler Burton. And Burton is the best athlete they have on this squad. Watch out, Brad. If he gets out in transition, he can do some special things above the rim. Perkins around a pick. Has to give it up. Bohannon, deep three. And we might have a push underneath on the rebound. I think we definitely have one. Keegan Murray. Using that great side to try to get on the offensive glass. Got a little bit of a push in the back. Gustafson picks up the foul. And it doesn't take long for him to come out. He's their defensive stopper, so they can't afford to get him in foul trouble. So he doesn't even, well, it lasts a little over a minute before he has to come out. And now another foul called. That's, that's two quick ones on Richmond. Man. That one's on Crabtree. Our first game, we didn't have a foul in almost the first half, did we? <laughs> yeah, the first half was really, really fast in our first game. Murray, baseline jumper short. Taken out of the air by Grant Golden. Golden, their big presence inside at 6'10", 255. Asking for the ball right now and getting it with Rabracha. Trying to hold him back. Gilliard on top on the drive for to shoot. Golden's going to have to take it if he can get a shot away. They didn't see it. They didn't see the clock running down. Excellent defensive possession by Iowa. Everybody was in position. And that's what Iowa's going to have to have if they're going to make a big time run this turn is to be consistent on the defensive end. We know they can score. They can hit the three. But the defense is what people are going to be looking at. Is that going to be consistent? Fran McCaffrey in his 12th year as the head coach at Iowa. 20 plus wins, 11 of the last 15, four straights. For the Hawkeyes, always seem to be good. They're 0 for 4 to start the game, though, so that's not so good. I was starting this game out a little bit tight. Yeah. Missed two layups. Murray kind of forced his shot. 
But as they settle into this game, look for them to really get better shots because they want the better offensive teams we have in the country. Robracha, fade away. Tough shot with the clock shot. Shot clock winding down. Ties it at two. Golden, hook shot. Doesn't get the roll. Robracha with the rebound. Bohannon brings it up with a hurry. You see what I was trying to do. They're trying to push that pace. If they get that rebound, they're trying to get it and go. And now we have Keegan Murray in the post. Murray back and in, draws a double team off the window. Robracha had a hold of the rim. Got his hands clear of that. The rebound is to Richmond. Backdoor cut, Gilliard. Great pass by Golden. Excellent finish, better pass. Golden with the excellent backdoor look. And a whistle as Keegan Murray's gonna go to the free throw line. Foul out KO. Coca-Cola Zero Sugar, best Coke ever, like the GOAT. Is this fact checked? Debate the GOATness. Not a lot of doubt about the GOAT in this guy. Maybe not the greatest of all time, but one of the better ever at Iowa. Keegan Murray, sophomore out of Cedar Rapids. I've won the best seasons at Iowa of all time. You're not kidding. 24 points a game. 8.6 rebounds, 56% from the floor, leads the team in all those categories. He just does so much from an offensive standpoint. His offensive package is, is truly unique because he can go in there and post up, as you've seen, they've been trying to get to him, get it to him early on the block, but he can step out, shoot the three, put it on the floor. Talk to some guys that I know that the scouts say he had, they feel like he has a little bit of Paul Pierce in his game. Mm. Not, maybe not quite the athlete, but a little bit of Paul Pierce in his game. That's not bad company. Yeah. If you can be mentioned with, with Paul Pierce, a.k.a. the truth, that's great company, actually. <laughs> I think it just has more to do with the size and the versatility. Probably. Got his first two free throws to even it at four. I was showing a little bit of a trap. Probably not going to bother Gilliard too much. Nope. One, of the, one of the steadier guards we have in the nation. There's a nice pass by Golden again. That's his second great dish. This time to Burton. Perkins on the dribble with eight to shoot. Bohannon got a pick. Let's fly. Too strong on the three. I will keep it alive. McCaffrey will try triple of his own. Got it. Hello. There you go. That's what they do. That's their calling card. Bohannon missed a shot. That's an easy three for him. But McCaffrey did not. If you don't get a hand up in these guys' faces, they will definitely make you pay. Iowa's first lead four minutes into the game. Golden at the top of the key. He, he feels comfortable. He's a, he's a big body, but he's kind of nimble out there. Yeah, tried to take his own shot, and then stepping out of the baseline was Rebracha. Iowa with an early lead. Two great passes. Grant Golden to his teammates. But then McCaffrey from long range. Iowa in front. And now thrilling drives presented by Nisa. And Grant Golden right here at the back door. Finds Gilliard on the cut, and he's not done. Twice, they say twice is nice, Brad, as he finds Burton right there, cutting to the basket as well. The big fella at 6'10", averages three assists a game, already has two early on. Chris Mooney in his 17th year. Three NCAA tournament appearances, winning his coach in Richmond history. Got another good club this year. How big of a bonus is it for you to have a big man that has size, but at the same time, when he's at the top of the key, he's a threat to throw that pass or thread the needle? No doubt. He's over 2,000 points, over 1,000 rebounds, and he's closing in on 500 assists. That's doing a lot of work. That's golden that we're talking about. Stoney Perkins. Murray. Trying to go to work, draws a double team and a steal by Burton. First Iowa turnover, Gilliard on a run out, trying to save it, and couldn't. And Murray's going to have to be a little bit tougher, a little bit more physical inside. I know that the staff has been happy with the way he's played from a physical standpoint, game 
eight to ten pounds of muscle in the offseason really got after it in the weight room but he's been bumped off his spot on his last couple of jumpers so he's gonna have to be tougher in there because sometimes uh, NCAA games can be officiated a, a little bit more liberally right Perkins a lob oh threw it over McCaffrey's head he must have thought he was that one to Vince Carter that was that was super high <laughs> Patrick McCaffrey 6'9 maybe that'd be 7'9 to catch that thing yeah McCaffrey's looking back like is that pass to me and his dad the head coach shaking his head why didn't I teach him better and a whistle and a foul down low is going to be on Perkins So Gilliard will inbound. Richmond trailing by one. He's got Rabracha on him. He just backpedals and takes a three. Murray will pull it down off the backside. Keegan Murray for three. Short. Rebound off the Crabtree. And the struggles continue for Murray, but he can't stop shooting. This team is all about his offense, so I like the fact that he's aggressive. Even though he's not hitting shots, he can't miss shots and then get a little tentative. Gilliard. Jumper goes. Is it a three? It is. Gilliard just so calm, cool, and collective with the, ball, with the rock. Never in a hurry. Understands he can get to wherever he needs to on the court with his speed and quickness, and then he's an excellent decision maker. Murray up high in the paint, and that's what scouts love about him—the six-eight frame. He can go down there and take a basket in the post, but at the same time, he can slice and dice you from behind the three-point line. Even at nine, six minutes into the half, this guy hit some big shots in the tournament in the eight ten. Hook shot on the baseline will go. Matt Grace took his time down there on the block got to a nice pretty hook didn't rush at all McCaffrey three rims out Murray tips it to himself and then back out to Perkins Tony's going to try a triple and Burton hands it off to Gilliard Gilliard pull up off the mark, and Bohannon will bring it for the Hawkeyes. Maybe all the way. Whoops. Slipped and Good fell. Up. Turnover and a run out oh, for Gilliard. It might get spicy. Oh, <laughs> nice and easy. Nice and easy. I was thinking Gilliard <laughs> might throw it off the backboard to Burton. He looked back. But he understood time and score. He understood the situation. This is a big time game. No, no need to go show time just yet. That's right. McCaffrey speed on that pass to get it down low to Murray but he's fouled by Grace. Bohannon slipped on one end of the floor. Right there. Excellent defense by Richmond Burton in the right place at the right time. And you see Gillard right there he takes that 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 quick look back when he did that I thought he might try to throw it off the glass because Burton is a next level athlete and that would really get the crowd on their side stuck with the safer play probably the play that his coaching staff wanted him to make. Taking the sure two. And Keegan Murray gets the first free throw. Watch live men's games on your computer, phone, tablet, or streaming device with NCAA March Madness Live. Scan the QR code now to download. Connor McCaffrey comes in for Iowa in between free throws, as does Joe Toussaint for the Hawkeyes. And their first team All American, Keegan Murray, knocks down both free throws. Six for Keegan. Richmond by two. A little backcourt pressure from Murray. Gustafson's back in there. Gilliard pull up three. And Burton got the handle underneath and was fouled on the baseline. As you see Burton in there going in there, fight with Murray for the rebound. Murray, quick reach in. Burton wanted to hand one, but they weren't giving him that one. That was Chris Murray, by the way. The foul, not Keegan. Oh, my. That's okay. Yeah. Everybody does yeah, that. Yeah, everybody makes that mistake. <laughs> I'm just glad it's not 22 and 23. It's 22 and 24, but that you still can't tell them apart. Their games are different. But... 
So Bohannon shaking his head. Two quick fouls on Iowa. One on Chris Murray. And one on Jordan Bohannon sends Tyler Burton to the free throw line. Second team all A-10. It's a good free throw shooter but not on that one. Shooting 80 percent on the year. Got the second five for Burton. A three point lead for the Spiders. I've been impressed with Richmond early on. Got good possessions. A couple good backdoor looks. I like how they played from the defensive standpoint limiting Iowa. Nice kick out. Murray to Murray. Three pointer won't go. Burton with a rebound. No look pass. Inside. Golden misses close. Oh, great look by Gilgit. I would love to see Golden finish that one. Take your time, big fella. Finish with strength and power. Bohannon doubled. Connor McCaffrey on the dribble. And that one was blocked by Burton on the drive by Toussaint. And Burton's capable of making those type of plays all game long. You said it earlier, we'll say it again. He's the best athlete they have on this team. Burton was short. Two other attempts missed on the stickbacks. And back come the Hawkeyes. Chance to cut it to one, and they do with Keegan Murray on the drive. <laughs> Drop step by Golden. Still runs out of room. Nice defense by the Hawkeyes. And then a slap foul on Toussaint. Nine minutes in. One point game. The Richmond Spiders, a 12 seed, trying to upset the number five Iowa Hawkeyes. We're early in Buffalo. Nine minutes in, Iowa down one. Coach McCaffrey a moment ago with Evan. Well, Coach, what do you want to see offensively to try and continue to open this thing up? Well, I think we've gotten some good shots. They haven't fallen for us, but we got to get some seconds when they're not falling. How do you feel about the defensive end? Pretty good to give up a couple back doors more than I wanted to, but I think all in all we're doing all right. I appreciate it. Thank you. Well, for the first time ever, the Stanley Cup playoffs are on TNT and TBS. You won't want to miss a minute. You can watch starting May 5th to see who will raise the cup. Hawkeyes of the Big Ten, 12 and 8 this year, 26 and 9 overall. <laughs> we were kidding around with Coach McCaffrey. Said, what do you think of the seating and everything for you guys and the rest of the Big Ten? He said he looked at us and kind of smirked and said, you know, they start talking about that in November. When you get to the NCAA tournament, everybody you play is good, so who cares? I thought that was a great answer. And, that, and that's the perfect type of mindset you have to have. Sometimes the seed is going to go in your favor, sometimes it's not. But no matter who you play, if you're going to make a run to the Final Four or championship, you're going to have to knock off some good teams along the way. So the seeding obviously sometimes doesn't really matter. Gilliard trying to sprint Great inside pass. and does. Great dish to Kao. Nathan Kao, first basket. I mean, Gilliard just seems like a, an extension of the coaching staff. He's a coach's dream. When he comes out there, you can depend on him to make the right play, see the right play, and then execute it. Keegan Murray, the kick out. They move it around the perimeter. Chris Murray on the drive of the left hand. Nice drive. Iowa, one of the top teams in the Big Ten in points from their bench. Chris Murray's part of that. They score over 27 points from their bench. That's his second best in the Big Ten. Oh, man, that's big time. When you can go to your bench and get buckets, that's you. Takes a lot of pressure off your starter and your stars. And you know that second unit can come in and extend the lead or get you back in the ball game if you're down. And strip and a foul is going to be uh, Gilliard. And you see Gilliard here recognizing that it's, they switch to a zone, drives right inside. Able to find a crease in the defense, get the assist. And I just like the fact that this young man had to wear with all to see the defense, understand what was going on, and not over penetrate. He just understood one quick two dribbles here, get the assist, get out of there. Well, 
One more substitution before the inbounds pass. Golden's going to get a breather, and Matt Grace will come in for him. So 6-10 goes out, 6-9 comes in. Yo Toussaint running the point now. And this Richmond coaching staff talked a lot about how are they going to match up against Iowa when both the Keegan brothers are in and Iowa doesn't have that traditional post in there. It creates a lot of problems from an offensive standpoint of who guards who and the spacing. They kept it alive. Keegan Murray out to his brother Chris. And those two play catch down low. And offensive foul on Keegan Murray. And he's saying he was in the restricted area and referee's not buying it. So that's the first foul on Keegan. He might be in a restricted area, but if you just leave your shoulder like that, I don't even think it matters. Oh yeah. You can be in a restricted area, but you can't play, you can't play bully ball like that. Yeah, that was a big shoulder. Yeah. That showed some of that eight extra pounds of muscle you were talking about earlier. A little too much muscle. Now Chris Murray trying to overplay, almost came up with a steal. Baseline jumpers too strong. Sanford will bring it down for Iowa. Pull up and take a three. Keegan Murray with a rebound over Gilliard. They get it right back to him on the low block. And he has been short on those post-ups all game long for some reason. I'm not sure if it's Richmond being too physical. Maybe he's just pulling the string a little bit. But he hasn't looked as comfortable as I've seen him all year long in the post. Gilliard, left hand with a little English. No looks comfortable. That, guy, does. that guy right there. <laughs> nice dish inside from Connor McCaffrey to Peyton Sanford. One point game. We approach the eight minute mark. Gilliard rims out at two. Chris Murray with a rebound. Keegan Murray's drive on the baseline, just too fast. Too fast, too quick, too big and explosive. If that jumper's not falling, you, you can cure that, Brad, by just going to the basket with reckless abandon. That's what he did, just took the baseline right there. That's Second. what great scorers do. Second time, Iowa's led by one. Grace draws a triple team down low. Ball's going to be bumped out of bounds with a steel boy Richmond's ball, but now they're down by one, courtesy of this baseline slam by Keegan Murray. Richmond down one. Here's Chris Moody with Evan Washburn. Well, Coach, you bottled up Iowa for much of that first portion of the first half here. What's been working? Well, I think we've defended well. We're very aware of Murray, of course, and uh, Bohannon. Uh, so I think our defense has been pretty good for the most part. We got a couple of fouls early that shifted us around a little bit, but I think we dug in and have a good awareness of where Murray is and where Bohannon is. Thank you. Thanks. Murray's got 10. Bohannon's only taken two shots and hasn't scored. It's Part cooking competition, part who done it. Six cooks compete. One cook tries to secretly ruin everyone's dish. Rat in the kitchen. New competition series, March 31st on TBS. There's a spider and a Hawkeye in Buffalo. And it's a one point game. Iowa in front. And early on in this game, two things that stand out for me is Richmond is only has limited Iowa to only two fast break points and one of nine from the three point line. So that, that's very good for what Richmond wants to do from a defensive standpoint. Yeah, I was only shooting 32% from the floor. Richmond will take that all day long. This is the second time that I was come out of the timeout with a little bit of his own, and that time it worked. And that's what you're trying to do as a, as a coach. Sometimes you just want to throw the other team off, give them a different look out of a timeout, throw a zone, maybe a trap, and just see if you can create a turnover or a bad possession. Grace thought Gilliard was going one way and Gilliard was going the other. Here's Iowa with a slam on the other end with Rabracha. And they've got a three point lead. Burton trying to work his way inside, kicks it back out. Gustafson, three is off the mark. Connor McCaffrey with a rebound. 
Robracha again. Great pass. He'll give it up. And three won't go. Chris Murray with a rebound. We're starting to see Iowa get, get a little bit active on the offensive glass. Sanford missed two threes in the same possession. Oh, what a pass by Gilliard and the roll by Gustafson. I mean, Gilliard is just that type of point guard that he's just the engine. He sees plays before they happen, understands where everybody's supposed to be, makes life so much easier on his teammates. Chris Murray fouled. I don't know if it was from the front or the back. He was a sandwich in there, a Murray sandwich. And you see Gilliard right here. Quick look off, drops the bounce pass. Excellent point guard play. I played with a guy in Dallas by the name of Jason Kidd, and he'd be he'd be proud of the way Gilliard <laughs> ran that fast break right there. No doubt. Chris Murray, left-hander, rims out the first. Get complete coverage of NCAA Division I Women's Tournament on NCAA.com. Some substitutions, Sanford and Toussaint go out. Bohannon comes back in. Golden comes back in for the Spiders. And Chris Murray, a 65% free throw shooter, will have another try right here. Got it. Three for Chris Murray. Brother Keegan coming back in with 10 to lead Iowa. Yes, folks, they do look a little bit alike. Slightly. <laughs> Slightly. <laughs> Coach McCaffrey said to us yesterday, got to understand, they're two completely different players. Their personalities are different. I have to coach them different, but they are hard to keep track of when they're not wearing numbers on who's who. Inside, Kale missed in close. Patrick McCaffrey with the rebound. Working it all the way down for a turnaround jumper from the free throw line and got it. Coach McCaffrey is very excited about his son, not just because of how he's playing right now, but for what they think he's going to do next year. They feel like he's going to be the next guy that could take a step. He said he expects a big jump in his progression, and he said, I think he's going to be special. Well, there's a chance that Keegan Murray might take his talent somewhere else to the NBA and if he does do that that's going to open up opportunity and he maybe can take advantage the same way Keegan Murray did and, and the same way Burton took advantage and hit that three the three by number three eight points for Tyler Burton McCaffrey mid-range jumper oh. off the mark and Rebracha will be called for a push, I think. Oh, well, maybe not. Maybe it's going the other way. This Iowa team has so many guys with size and versatility. When you look at Keegan Murray, when you look at McCaffrey, these guys are legit 6'8, 6'9, strong bodies, but at the same time, they can shoot the ball, post inside, put it on the floor. That foul was on Nathan Kale, his second. So in the battle for the rebound, he won it over the guy that's at the free throw line, Robacha. Came over as a transfer from North Dakota. Senior from Sambor, Serbia. And he's off to a five point start, which if he hits this, he's on his average. So they don't expect a lot of scoring from him. Missed the second, but he averages just under six a game. Burton, a uh, heat check. Nope. Yeah. Didn't pay the heat bill on that one. <laughs> yeah. Well, we got a foul underneath. So that time they do call it on Robracha. Ball out to Gilliard on the baseline with the Spiders down two. Looking for help. Got it from Crabtree. See how Rich is going to solve the zone. Last time they turned it over in this zone. See if they can get a quality look this time. Going up with a three. And nobody home but McCaffrey on the rebound. 
And Iowa will live with that. Burton is such a great athlete. If, he, if he's going to swing it and just settle for that three, they'll take him to doing that all day long. Not that he can't shoot, but they'll just settle for that, that jumper right there like that. Well, that is a tough shot. Going to your left, shooting back to your right. McCaffrey missed it. Gilliard brings it down. Chance for the Spiders to tie or lead. Burton spinning inside. Got three Hawkeyes on him. No foul. Here comes Hawkeyes with numbers. McCaffrey and hit it. Slapped by Golden and Great Golden saves Golden. it. Ahead to Burton. Pull up jumper, mid range, no, no go. <laughs> Burton's not shy, is he? No. That guy's not passing the salt at the dinner table. That's four straight <laughs> shots. Well, the score doesn't change, but the action was pretty good there for a minute. Keegan Murray slips. Mohannon picks it up, and he goes down. Looks like we're skating the Sabres play here. Everybody's going have an icing call pretty soon. I think Keegan Murray might have turned his ankle a little bit when he fell down. He's trying to walk it off. So one guy goes down. A second will go down and we'll go away. We'll be right back. Neither team shooting well at all as we take a look at our game summary. Iowa one for 11 Ouch. outside the arc two for eight for Richmond. So one team shooting 35 percent the other shooting 31 percent on that Keegan Murray drive two bad things happen. First he steps with his right foot and slips off Tyler Burton and then twists his left ankle in the meantime and uh, he's kind of holding on to both of them. Let's check in with Evan. Yeah guys had a long view on that left foot throughout the break there. Good sign though didn't receive any treatment from the athletic training staff. Didn't walk with any noticeable limp just kind of sat there and now he's back in. We'll keep an eye on it but appears to be a positive news. All right, that's good. Tony Perkins will inbound for the Hawkeyes who lead by two with 322 remaining. There's six on the shot clock. Keep in mind they get it to Patrick McCaffrey. Bohannon just got it away and it's way short shot clock violation so they were not quite as aware that they should have been about how much time they had to shoot. And give Richmond some credit. They give them a, actually a lot of credit. This is excellent defense. Gilliard right there, right in Bohannon's hip pocket, challenging the shot but not fouling. But more importantly, all we've heard about is Iowa's offense and how crisp it is. And it has looked anything but that today. You have to tip your staff to Richmond and his coaching staff for the game plan that's been implemented. Well said. Gilliard is so quick. He's going to take the three off the handoff. Rebound, Robacha. Jordan Bohan is 0 for 2 from the floor. So his three point shooting has not been any kind of factor so far here in the first half. Patrick McCaffrey just trying to get the ball out of there. Keegan Murray, five to shoot. Rabracha working baseline against Grace, lost the handle. They're going to have a second shot clock violation in a row. Don't see that very often. You really don't. You definitely don't see it very often against Iowa. Coming up, AT&T at the half. Scores and highlights in the latest NCAA tournament news. That's all coming up, AT&T at the half, which is 221 away. So our score has not changed. Both teams cold shooting. And the coach is having a word with his son, who's not paying any attention, just like at home. And that's how you have to do sometimes, man. Your dad's yelling at you just stare off and stare off out into the sunset and don't don't respond. Iowa the fourth best scoring team in the country and number one in the Big Ten and they're having quite a struggle to find points today. Here's Burton. Oh what a tough shot right through Chris Murray. Gotta love the mindset he will not be deterred. Had three or four bad possessions in a row but that didn't stop him. He is always on go mode and looking to attack. Murray actually got a piece of that too and it still went off the window and in. So a chance for a three point play for Tyler Burton. Six seven junior. His dad Quentin. Played at Providence under Rick Pitino. An old fashioned three pointer here if he hits it. And he does. And Richmond goes back in front by one. 
way I was played. I mean, it sounds funny. They're, they're lucky to only be down one. You're not kidding. I can't remember the last time I said Iowa had a good offensive possession or got a good look. That wasn't too bad by Tony Perkins, his first basket. Right on cue. Mr. Perkins making me look bad. <laughs> You're directing trap. He wants a screen right here. Crabtree gets it back to Gilliard now, trying to get it to the big fella. Gilliard on the handoff back. They move it around. Too much traffic on that pass, and the Spiders turn it over. I'm sure Bohannon would like to get a clear look sometime before halftime just to get his eyes set for the second half. And Perkins, after scoring the last trip, is going to go to the free throw line this time down the court. That's back to back strong possessions by Perkins. As Bohannon got down the lane, kicked it to Perkins. Perkins knew exactly what to do. Let's not settle. Let's get a good bucket from the FT line. It's only a sophomore out of Indianapolis. Good foul shooter, 81 percenter. And he shows it there. Watch CBS Sports HQ for the best coverage of the big dance. Catch tournament highlights, picks, previews, recaps. And much more on the free 24 7 Sports News Network. Download the CBS Sports app to watch today. Tony Perkins missed the second. And Iowa over the two point lead as we approach one minute in the first half. Crabtree backpedals were under a minute. Burton has been the star, if you ask me, for Richmond in the first half with the exception of Gilliard. And here he is getting his man up in the air, but it was blocked by Keegan Murray. Iowa coming the other way. Trying to feed it to Murray. A lot of traffic in there, too, and Iowa gives it right back. And that's definitely not Iowa basketball. Iowa leads the nation in assist to turnover ratio, but they've been sloppy lately. And Richmond going to take a timeout. There's a five six second difference between the shot clock and the game clock when we come back. And now AT&T 5G takes us above the rim for one of the best plays of the game. Tell you what you take these away partner and their field goal percentage would be even worse than it already is. Man listen we we touted Iowa was one of the best offensive teams in the nation. They have been all year long but not tonight or I should say not this afternoon. I'm not sure if they're tight if it's nerves. Or we should just do it. We probably should give Richmond a lot of credit here. Great defense. They've stuck to the game plan. Haven't given Iowa any good looks and have played tough inside on the post. Remember, the winner goes on to take on Providence. Providence, the winner over South Dakota State earlier this afternoon here in Buffalo. But this Iowa team, a lot of people felt built for a long run in the tournament. They're not built even to get to Saturday if they don't straighten this thing out here in the next 20 minutes and 20 seconds. The good thing for them is they have nine offensive rebounds and that's normally been a calling card for them. They're 20 and 0 when they win the rebound battle so they can hang in this game and find a way to get it better offensively. They still have a good shot in the second half. Burton baseline jumper can't have that and he's fouled by Perkins. You just simply can't have that Burton has been struggling four of ten from the field. You can't foul him on a three point shot right there. You have to live with the live with the results after you have a good contest. Tyler Burton 10 points and got three free ones coming up courtesy oh, yeah. of that left hand of Perkins hit him right on the elbow. Excellent call. And he knocked him down at the end. You have to give the shooter the ability to land. So it's a double win for Perkins. Right. Two fouls for the price of one. <laughs> this one would tie it. And it goes. This next one would give them the lead as substitutions coming in, getting Keegan Murray back on the offensive end. Same with Bohannon with 7.9 remaining. Iowa should be able to get off a good shot depending on what happens here. But Iowa might take a time out here. We'll take it. We'll be back in 30 seconds. So Fran McCaffrey obviously came up with what he wanted his offense to do after this next free throw be it a rebound or an inbounds play high game right now Burton can give the Spiders the lead with 7.9 remaining in the first half and there's going to be 
possibly one more sub here before. Nope. Going to bring Sanford back. Oh, now he's sending him right back. Now to he's the sending him back to the scorers table. Burton anyway on the third of three and got him all three. Now they blow the horn. Sanford comes in. So Richmond by one. McCaffrey, Bohannon, Keegan Murray, Sanford, and Patrick McCaffrey on the floor for Iowa with 7.9 and some full court pressure. Patrick McCaffrey is going to bring it down. The handoff to his brother for three. Too short. Second chance. Still won't go. Richmond, the Spiders leading by one at halftime and a low scoring affair here in Buffalo and that's not the kind of Iowa team that we saw win 26 games this season. Let's go to Evan. Well coach you broke down the defense well when we spoke earlier offensively though in the second half if you have to keep pace with Iowa what do you want to see. Well we need to we need to put in we missed a couple shots around the basket. Uh, we need to put those in calm down maybe a little bit put those baskets in. And then a couple of times we pump faked ourselves when we're open for three. We got to shoot those uh, shoot those shots when we can, uh, because a big athletic team like this that might not come back around to you. Coach, appreciate the time. Thank you. I think two things. As you look at the first half, Jordan Bohannon hasn't scored. Neither has Grant Gold in the center for Richmond. But Chris Moody Spiders do have the lead. 29-28 at the end of the half. We'll send you to AT&T at the half after these messages. You're watching the NCAA Men's Basketball Championship. Second half just about set to begin here in Buffalo. Brad Nessler, Brendan Haywood, Evan Washburn will join us in a minute. I know, partner, you are surprised at what we've seen in the first half, right? Man, oh, man, I'm definitely surprised. Iowa won the better offensive teams in the country. One of 11 from three, only two fast break points. Richmond has done an incredible job defensively in slowing this game down. As we take a look at the Capital One first half statistics, is what Brendan's talking about. One for 13, terrible from the free throw line. Had they not gotten offensive rebounds, this might be a little more lopsided in the Spartans' side of things. Let's take this power pause presented by Power Aid. Here's Evan. Yeah, well, Fran McCaffrey's surprised with the way they played offensively in that first half as well because he felt like they got good shots, guys. He said good shooters were missing open shots. Keegan Murray, Jordan Bohannon, 0 for 5 combined from three. He said we have to play through their physicality on offense. He pointed the offensive glass as a huge part of that first half. And the other point he made, guys, is he liked to get to the line more. Feels like if they attack and transition, attack in the settle, they can get some more free throw opportunities. All right, here we go. Second half. The Spiders of the A-10 up by one. And I, and I disagree with Slam Fran slightly. I don't think Iowa got great shots. I, I didn't see a bunch of wide open shots that they were missing. I think Richmond had a hand in, and contested a lot of the shots that they were able to get them to make it go up. Golden did get a wide open look. And that he was has a wide not open scored. Shot. Patrick McCaffrey on the spin move cut off by Gilliard. Got it to Tony Perkins over three. That's more what Fran was talking about. Right. Perkins right there. Good three point shooter. Missed it wide open in the corner. Here's some of what we were talking about. Egan Murray's been short on just about everything, although he does have 10 points to lead the way for the Hawkeyes. Yeah, they just make the looks really haven't been that great. And then when they have had some good looks, they haven't been able to knock them down. I would just look tight. Let's be honest. Everybody was singing their praises, talking about how great they were. They just won the Big Ten tournament. It looked like they came out a little bit flat. Whoa. How about that move? As Gilliard did a step back and a crossover on Bohannon and then drilled the three. Hello. Gilliard's not tight. He's ready. He's a gamer. He wants to play. He's been loose since yesterday, I think. Man. He just has that natural confidence, that bop to his stuff. Now, Evan said, if you've played as many minutes as he has, <laughs> you've seen it all. Look at the separation he created from Bohannon right there. Ooh. Able to step it back all the way to the three point line. Drop, they, Bo drop Bohannon off in the paint. Yep. He sure did drop him off. Like an Uber ride. <laughs> He's got 92 threes on the season. 
And Richmond has matched its biggest advantage. Backdoor pass. cut. Beautiful pass from Golden. Great backdoor pass by Golden. Gilliard set him up. Fake like he was going to be a dribble handoff and went right back door. Not the first time those two have done that. Roommates for four years together at Richmond. They know each other inside and out. Outside is Patrick McCaffrey. And he needed that one. He needed that one. Iowa needed that one. A lot of people with Iowa going far in their brackets needed that one. <laughs> Cuts the lead in half. Down to three. Here's a guy that was star on both ends of the first half. Burton and now Golden going hard to the rack. What a block. Robracha let him have it right back in his face. Heat check. Patrick McCaffrey's got two in a row. There's those threes that they need. They're knocking him down now. Fourth time in the game we've been tied. And they started with the defensive end. Got a great block. Was able to run out in transition, had numbers, got an excellent look at three. Golden long hook shot hit the back of the iron. Robracha clears it off. I'd watch number 22 this trip down if he gets his hands on it outside the arc. And he's going to feed it into Keegan Murray, and he is fouled by Gustafson. That's three, I think, on Andre. You see Golden with the nice take to the basket, but Robracha was having none of that. And McCaffrey with the smooth stroke from free. Bench loves it. They're going crazy. They understand the energy that, that's needed right now. And it's always important in these type of games that your bench be into it. You're down a little bit. You're the higher seed. You need your bench to help lift your guys up. And Perkins on a drive and one. All of a sudden, Iowa comes storming out of this half. It looks much better and much different. Iowa looks like a totally different team on the offensive end. I'm not sure who that team was in the first half, but that wasn't Iowa. This is the Iowa basketball team that we've come to know and love. Foul on Crabtree, and now there's a little bit of issue for Richmond with foul trouble for Chris Mooney because Gustafson went out. And now that's three on Crabtree as well as Perkins knocks down the three-point play. And Iowa goes from six down to three up in a hurry. They extend, that, they extend the defense. Trying to slow Richmond down. Just take a little bit of time off the clock. Crabtree. Short. Burton battles through some arms to get the rebound. And he goes back up with it. No foul called there. He was looking for one. Doesn't get it. Keegan Murray bringing it for the Hawkeyes. Bohannon thought about a. He wanted to let it fly. 27 foot three. He didn't take it. McCaffrey will take it and he is hot right now. Patrick McCaffrey, eight points in the half, 13 for the game. Timeout. That's a quick eight for McCaffrey. He's hotter than fist grease right now, Brad. 39 <laughs> 34 Hawkeyes. Our tournament summary 38 years ago, Michael Jordan scored 27 against Temple on a St. Patrick's Day in the second round action. Eight teams in the Big Ten remaining in the tournament, including an Iowa team right now that's on an 11-0 run. And partner, they look a whole bunch different than they did in the first half. Listen, they look a whole bunch different because McCaffrey got it going with eight quick points, and you see Perkins chipping in as well. Honestly, it looked like Iowa just looked themselves in the mirror and came out as a different team in the second half. First half, they were a little bit sleep. They were sleepwalking just a little bit. Didn't quite look like themselves. This is the Iowa basketball team that I've been watching all year long. Chris Mooney had to call that timeout to try to break the spell 11 straight points and see if his spiders can get a good look this trip down. Again, Grant Golden, their center, has yet to score in this game, averaging 14 a game. And he brings everybody together, calls them in at the free throw line. And he hasn't lacked for opportunity. He's 0 for 8 from the field. Has some great passes, though, but he just hasn't been able to take care of business in the paint. Gilliard will trigger it. Nice bounce pass. No look to KO. Wow. And they lost KO in that zone. They went to the zone out of bounds and nobody picked him up. He was standing there by himself.
McCaffrey's got a couple this half. That one rimmed out. Burton with a rebound. But that's still a good quality look. Yep. Gilliard all the way in the baseline leaves it for Burton, who drew the foul from Robacha. This guy can do a little bit of everything. Jacob Gilliard, watch this one way, look one way, pass the other. Cuts the lead to three. Watch live men's games on your computer, phone, tablet, or streaming device with NCAA March Madness Live. Scan the QR code right now to download. And man, oh man, how the spiders been finding the back door all day right there. We see Golden with two great back-to-back -back passes. Then we see Gilliard right there finding KO inside. And another back door. The back door has been left wide open today. And the Richmond Spiders have been walking through it. They've been doing excellent work at the top to keep those backdoor passes. Nine assists on 14 made field goals at the free throw line. Tyler Burton, it's his 15th point. Averages 16.3 to lead the team. So he's right on it with this free throw. Burton's been aggressive to score. And he's gotten the ball every single time he's looked to push the action. No fear in that young man's eyes. No way. Jordan Bohannon scoreless to this point at the point. Seems like it's been an eternity since we've mentioned Keegan Murray's name also. That's true. Now he gets a touch. He had 10 points in the first half, none in the second half so far. Bohannon scoreless. As he works for a turnaround jumper who was a very tough, that was a basically a no-look shot. That's a tough shot. Once again, we keep talking about some of the misses that Iowa has, but a lot of it has to be credited to Richmond's defense. Yep. Not giving an inch. The bigs are up at the level of the screen, not letting Iowa's guards come off and get easy looks at three. Back line of that defense is chattering and moving well. Golden too hard off the window. Man, for as much as I've loved Golden's passing, he has not been able to find the basket at all. And Richmond got a timeout with KO on the floor. I think that's what happened. So they get possession on a hustle play by Nathan KO. When you said Keegan Murray hadn't had a look in a while, you weren't kidding. It's been a, it's been a long time since he's had a jumper. Three seconds on the shot clock on the inbounds play. Golden finger he is. He finally got one. Took his time, finished that one off. And another nice dime from Gilliard. And the lead back to Richmond. And Golden's had great opportunities. It seems like he just rushed him around the basket. Took his time right there. Perkins in low has to bring it back out to Murray. Patrick McCaffrey hoists one up too strong off the window Gilliard with front. the outlet to KO can he outrun the Hawkeyes yes Hello. he can you feel the energy picking up in this building as KO brought the house down Richmond by three Murray wants it on the post they missed him right there McCaffrey cut off, got it to Perkins. Perkins too strong. Rebound Burton. And a foul on Burton. You see KO getting out in transition right there. Gilliard with the excellent, excellent find so KO can get out, be athletic on the break. Right now, this Richmond team is believing. They, they, they took Iowa's best shot and they didn't go down. They're not on the mat. They came out fighting. And so many, of these, so many times in these games, you see a team come out and the higher seed set recovers and comes back and you see that team kind of fold down the yeah. stretch. And that's not what's happening here. Richmond, they're, they're tough. They're an older team. A lot of guys came back with the COVID year. They got, look, they got like 20 guys on this team, man. So, we so, so we they, were going crazy at practice yesterday. Oh, my goodness, man. <laughs> Looked like a football team out yeah, there. And they had a lot of guys come back specifically for this moment to be in the NCAA tournament. So they're trying to make the most of their opportunity. Well, Iowa had gone on that 11-0 run to go up by five 
with 16.23 to go, and now three minutes later, they haven't scored since. Almost three minutes at least without a point. It's got to be Keegan Murray time. Um, we understand how talented this young man is. Your team's down three, 13 minutes to play. Offensively, you haven't been crisp most of the day. It's time for you to step up, take control of this ball game. Your first team All-American. And the officials separate Toussaint and Burton a little bit there during the break. Nice job of officiating. And then Toussaint just leveled Burton. That's not smart. Uh, I don't think the conversation was over between those two, I guess. That's not smart. I mean, yeah, that, that's just, you got you got to check your ego at the door. Yep. I had a coach used to say, don't let your ego be your amigo, okay? <laughs> <laughs> don't bring it with you. In this type of game, you have to let those type of plays go and get on to the next play. That's what coaches mean by next play mentality. A guy's in your head, he's yapping, he's talking, whatever. Okay, that's fine. That play's done, let's get to the next play. Can't let it carry over. Richmond has scored eight straight. Burton out to Grace with 10 on the shot clock. K.O. gets it to Burton. Same two guys. Toussaint giving away height. Burton in the paint. And it stripped out of bounds and shot clock violation. And I love Burton's aggressiveness, but if he would have just looked up, he had K.O. standing right there beside the basket by himself. Right here on this shake, Keegan Murray committed. A quick pass would have resulted in two points. I was still looking for points and a dry spell. It's lasted too long for them. Murray missed it with the right hand, went back up with the left hand. He had it partially blocked. Couldn't get either to connect. Grace. Gets it back out to Burton. Those two play catch on the low block. Sherrod outside. No good out of three. Keegan Murray all along, all alone for the rebound. See if he just goes to work on his own. He does. Came up short. He understands the time it is. Missed that shot. That's a shot that he that he normally makes in his sleep. I love, like I said, you know, when you know you're a big time star, you gotta take over. Make or miss, you gotta take over in these type of opportunities. Hillier with the hand on him is going to take the long three anyway. Got it. 11 straight answer now for Richmond. They're up six. Iowa's got almost five minutes without any points. Chris Murray. Kicks it out, Bohannon. Finally got a look for three and got it. First points for Jordan Bohannon. And boy, did I, boy, did I would need that. Uncle Mo was swinging Richmond's way. If they didn't get a score right there, man, they could have been in some deep trouble. Three pointer, number 454. Couldn't have come at a better time for Bohannon, but the answer on the other end. Dusan off the window. Iowa after the long dry spell hits a three and then a deuce for Toussaint and it's a three point game as we approach the midway point of the second half. Gilliar with Toussaint on him now. Gets it back in the corner and let's fly. Chris Murray way up for the rebound. Looking to push it to his brother Keegan. In the lane and off the window. Murray to Murray. Iowa back to within one. Richmond once again looking to do a series of dribble handoffs, eat, eat into this clock, 
try to wear this clock down, slow Iowa down, and then take advantage later on. And wow, Matt Grace, nice drive. Yes, Grace with an excellent baseline drive. He just took that basket. 30 points in the paint for the Spiders. And Murray's going to be fouled by KO. Picks up his third. 9.48 remaining. Spiders hanging on by three. Thanks, Adam. Tough game there. Panthers hanging with Gonzaga. The winner goes on to play Memphis, a team that you might not want to see on Saturday. Jacob Gilliard here is somebody you do want to see. You definitely want to see if you like great passes. He has been slicing and dicing all game long with six assists. The heart of this team. Every time they've needed a play, he's been the guy to make either he's been making the play or he's been a recipient. 17 points, six rebounds, and five assists. And he just plays with such great poise and confidence and a calm, calmness about himself. This moment doesn't seem like it's too big for him. Nope. Competes defensively. Look at him right there. Fighting, fighting through right there. That play was designed for Bohan, and he straight up just took that play away. McCaffrey takes the three with a shot clock winding down. Toussaint picks up the rebound and then threw it away. Ninth eye with turnover. This is a little different looking lineup now, right now, for the Spiders. They've got Grace out there who's hit some big shots in the A-10 tournament. Gustafson is playing with foul trouble. Burton, who's been great the whole game. K.O., who's got six points in this half, make it. Oh, thought he was going to have eight. Went against the Murray brothers and lost the battle. He wanted it, though. Chris Murray, short on the three. Spider rebound with 8.45 to go and a three-point lead. Oh, another great pass. Grace got bumped underneath a little bit. Back outside to Burton. KO off the window around Murray. He goes right back to it. He is heavy getting to that right hand. Ten points for Nathan Kale. Chris Murray still no good on the three. Right now there's a lid on the basket for Iowa. Gilliard. And that one was too high and too hot for KO. As Richmond turns it over, but they've still got the lead. Just under eight to go, and the Spiders up five. Game summary, the Iowa Hawkeyes, the five seed. Terrible shooting, 33%. They're probably lucky they're only down five. 51-46. Let's go courtside to Evan. Yeah, we've seen Jacob Gilliard do it all for this team on the floor, but it doesn't end. In between, he leads the huddle, and he's sitting in Chris Mooney's seat. You can see as we pan <laughs> back here, he's running it. The coaches do their thing, then they come in. Guys, Jacob Gilliard's impressive just based off of energy alone. He's played 40 minutes in seven straight games coming into this one. Four straight in the A-10 tourney. Boundless energy and maybe a future in coaching. Boy, he's been something today again. Scoring drought. I was had too many of them. One that lasted five minutes. Another two and a half right now. That sort of erased the 11-0 run they had at one point in this half. The Spiders answered with 11-0 run of their own. And as we approach seven and a half minutes, Keegan Murray short again out of three and the rebound Gustafson. That's been a theme today. Keegan Murray has been short on most of the shots. Burton the kick out. That three-pointer is off the mark as well. And out of bounds to Iowa. Yeah, if that three would have went down the lid, would have came off no, this place. No kidding. And going back to Gil, you're just seeing how he was talking to his teammates in that huddle. That makes a coach's job so easy when you have a leader like that that can take what you want, deliver it to the teammates, so you don't always have to be that hard coach delivering the tough messages. He's the guy telling them, listen, guys, we gotta fight through. We gotta, we gotta play the right way. We gotta finish this thing off. Battle for the loose ball. And possession arrow is going to keep it with Iowa. Look, look, look at everybody swarming. Gilly right there getting his hand in there. 
KO getting on the ground. Every everybody in the Richmond jersey is looking to get on the ground and get after that ball. Because Richmond has made has turned this thing into a dogfight. And, and, and right now it doesn't seem like Iowa has responded yet in the proper way. And now Iowa had earlier troubles. Remembering how much time they have to shoot. We're under 10. Well, it's not going to wait. Murray's missed all of his threes here in this half. They got and numbers. Golden trying to bring it down. The big fella will kick it back outside. Now they're going to set it. Take some time. Make sure you get a good shot. Burton misses a three. Keegan Murray a one handed rebound. And Iowa has really dodged, has really dodged some trouble right here because they. Oh, that's an offensive foul. Not Perkins. That's an offensive foul all day. Easy call. But on the defensive in Iowa, they've given up a couple of wide open threes that Richmond just hasn't knocked down. This is a danger point in this game. That's uh, that's an obvious call. Great charge there taken by by Burton. Perkins disagrees, but I think the officials got it correct. Burton's taking about three of those. Yeah. Burton with 16 points offensively as well. And Iowa goes right back into that zone. They're trying to throw Richmond off. Gilliard, three. Got it. That's three straight wide open threes that Iowa has given up. And they are officially on the ropes. We are officially on upset alert, Brad. Biggest lead of the night for the Spiders. Up eight. Biggest lead by either team, I might add. Gustafson, the outlet to Gilliard. Gonna run past and get fouled by Sanford. They're feeling it now. So is the crowd. Yes, they are. The crowd's getting into it. The bench is getting into it. You see Golden right there with the excellent class. Gil Gilliard steps into the three-point shot. The zone shifted, but just never got back and recovered to Gilliard. He was wide open, and that's absolutely the wrong man to leave wide open right now. His fourth triple of the night. His 94th of the season. Under six minutes to play. Eight point game. Richmond trying to win their fifth game in a row after four straight in the A-10 tournament. But I'm not sure anybody saw this coming. Turnover on the inside. Gives it back to Iowa. Bohannon, I push it. Iowa needs a good possession in the worst way. Bohannon got his man in the air. Got the three. That's exactly what the doctor ordered. Throw it inside to Keegan Murray. Defense collapsed to Keegan. Unselfish play right there. Kicks it right out to Bohannon for three. Second time Bohannon's hit a three now. That sort of settled things in and quieted the crowd, but they still trail by five. With five to go. Kale working against Murray and Keegan Murray with a foul. He knew Jordan Bohannon wasn't going to go scoreless in the game, but he did go scoreless in the first half. Right there, nice little sidestep jumper creates the space to get away from Golden. He understands what time it is. It's money time. He doesn't want to go home. He is two three pointers shy of matching J.J. Reddick's all time three point record for college basketball. He's that's got 455. That's pretty good company. That's not bad. I heard that Reddick got a pretty good. Yeah, player. I guess he was. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nice inbound to Burton. He missed the shot. It would have been another great inbounds pass from Gilliard for an easy deuce, but it wasn't an easy one. But he will go to the free throw line. And that's the difference between winning and losing. Don't tell me you want to win. Show me you want to win. This is the third time this zone has been asleep and has given up a, a bucket or a foul that uh, right, off, right off the inbounds pass. This zone has to be able to compress. I'm not sure if that's Keegan Murray or what. They both had their backs to the inbounds play. That didn't make much sense. Burton knocks down another free throw. Who envisioned greatness today? Tune in to Inside March Madness presented by Buick and find out. Spiders are thinking about greatness as a 12 seed trying to pick off number five Iowa. We saw Gilliard find Burton right there as he got fouled. We saw him find Golden earlier in the half and he also found uh, he also found chaos. 
So that's three, three times. That's six points they've gotten strictly off baseline out of bounds. You can't give that up with your eye when you're trying to get back into this game. Seven point Richmond lead as we're under five to go. Bohannon's got to give it up. Keegan Murray on top. Got his man in the air. Almost lost a dribble. Got it to McCaffrey and he buried it three. Patrick McCaffrey's fourth three pointer. 16 for him. Richmond goes right back into running their offense. They are not going to be in a hurry. They're going to move that thing from side to side, run that clock down, and see if they can get a good look. And wow, uncharacteristic turnover for Gilliard. Yep. Got in some traffic, got off balance, and tried to whip it sideways to Burton, and it went out of bounds. Right into press row. A four point Richmond lead, four minutes to play in regulation. Bohannon, tough shot, really tough shot. Almost got it to go. 349 remaining. Richmond, can they pull off the 12 5 upset? We'll find out in the next three minutes and 49 seconds. March Madness continues tonight. Eight more first round games across CBS, TBS, TNT, and True TV. You can decide the games you want to watch. If you haven't gotten enough of Brendan Haywood and Evan Washburn, you can watch that top line right there. We've got New Mexico State and UConn coming up a little bit later on. Why would they be tired, oh, of, why would they be tired of watching us? <laughs> Keegan Murray's only got two points this half and 12 for the game. You got to get Evan on more and show his perfect hair. I know it. There's no doubt about that. 56 52. They've had the second most close wins since February 7th. Five points or fewer. They've come from behind in so many games it's ridiculous. Nine wins when they trailed at halftime. They were up by one at halftime in this one. They had to win four in four days at the A-10 tournament just to get to this point. And now they've got the Iowa Hawkeyes on the ropes with three and a half to play. K.O. tried to get around Keegan Murray and Rabracha, but Rabracha knocked it out of his hands. So an opportunity here, a stop on one end. Can Iowa score on the other? Both McCaffrey's Connor with ball in hand and his younger brother Patrick out there along with Bohannon, Rabracha, and Keegan Murray. Shot clock's winding down. Five on the shot clock. They get it inside to Keegan on the baseline off the window. And that big was shot big when they needed it. That was big time. He set his base. Established excellent post position inside. Took his time, went right off the glass. If I'm Iowa, I'm coming right back to that. It's money time. I know Keegan hasn't had the best game, but I want the ball in my best player's hands. Gilliard. To Golden and another golden pass by the little point guard. Go well, right back to Keegan Murray on the block right here. He sets a pick out high for Bohannon. And now trying to set one for McCaffrey. Patrick McCaffrey got a three look. His brother is going to shag down the rebound on the backside. And kick ball with 2.15 to go. You're going right to the basket. Understanding he drew the defense in, had Golden on the weak side, and Golden hasn't had the best day offensively, but that time he took his time and finished it inside. I thought early in the game he was rushing those same opportunities. Bohannon with Gilliard on him. They get it back to him, just over two to go. Keegan Murray draws a double to the foul. And one. Right through it, and one. What, what did I tell you, Brad? Go right back to your best player in the area that he just scored. You know what? If they don't stop it, run it again. Yeah, run it again. Don't get bored with success or failure. Keep doing the same thing over and over again until a team makes an adjustment. Now to the free throw line to try to make it a one point game. Four for four today. Oh. 
And he got it. Fifty eight fifty seven. Burton trying to go up and under has to kick it back out on top to Gilliard for the reset with 15 on the shot clock. Gilliard tough shot rebound kept alive by Gustafson. Down to a minute and a half to go. Kale, five to shoot, in close, up and, and under. under. Uh-oh. And Kale's been a bully on the block. From 15 feet on in, he's wanted it all game long. And he continues to deliver. If this one ends up being a game-winning three-point play, it definitely is a KO. To the Iowa hopes. I see what you did there, partner. I'm picking up what you put in there. <laughs> He is not a good free throw shooter. I shouldn't even say that, but there it is on the screen. Chance for a three point play, though. Chris Murray comes back in. Rabracha goes out. And Grace back in. Golden out. And that was a great setup by KO because he had been getting, going hard middle to that right hand all day long. That time, quick move to the left, ends up in the end one. Didn't get it. You probably see why. It's not his strong suit. But it is a three point lead for the Spiders. And you don't have to force up a bad three here. Don't be afraid to go right back to where you had success with Keegan Murray on that block. Bohannon trying to shake Gilliard. Tough to do. Listen, your season's on the line. Get the ball to your best player. Patrick McCaffrey almost lost the dribble. Chris. That's a foul. Murray. Yes, they Oh, but he didn't, call, he didn't it. call it. That was a foul. He sure looked like it. He's looking around with his hands and his palms up as if to say, what do I have to do to get a foul? Whoa. Richmond got away with a major violation right there. Murray got hit right on the arm when he let that ball go. Approaching the half minute. And now KO's loose again. And and scored again. That might be the KO. His teammates think so. The fans are thinking so. An overplay by Murray and K.O. says I'm going through everybody again. He might not be able to hit free throws. But the fifth year senior from Montreal. Is doing everything else right. And how special is this moment for this Richmond squad? This is why all those guys came back. You look at that bench. You see 20 guys. A bunch of guys came back with the extra COVID year. They wanted to be a part of this. They wanted to be a part of this moment. And then on the flip side, you see Iowa right now searching for answers, trying to figure out how do we get here. Nathan K.O. missed his last one, but his field goals this half have been huge. And that Why one not? goes in. Why not? Two possession game with 34 seconds to go. And now you got to have a three. McCaffrey's going to work it inside and score it off the window, but it might be too little too late. Time out. 27 seconds. And it's 63 59. Spiders in front. Four point game with 27 seconds to go. Let's take you back, though, to earlier possession with Chris Murray taking a three. Partner. Now, I, I saw it from where I was sitting at, and I'm trying to figure out what is the official looking at right there? Gene Steratar. You got one job official. right there. And Gino, what do you think? Yeah, no, I'm with you guys. You know, Pat Adams, a trail official. His job is to is to look at the shot there from the three. We can clearly see that there's good significant contact on the forearm, which causes that ball to fall drastically short. And, you know, that's a play you got to get right in this scenario, fellas. Yeah, I, I definitely think that it should have been called. I said as soon as it happened, and I just don't really understand because I see the official. He has great line of sight. He's not blocked out. I don't know how you missed that play, and that's a huge call in this game. Now, I'm not going to uh, blame one missed call for why I was in this situation, but man, oh, man, they could really have used those three free throws in that type in, in the ball game right now. Chris Murray, a 65% free throw shooter, hit, hit one of two 
They reset the clock. They started the clock just a little bit too early, so the officials came over and told us they've added a little bit of time. So 27.7 as Leah Mooney looks on the coach's wife. A little tense moment for everybody in the family. The two sons as well sitting with her. And the Spiders with a four point lead with 27.7 to go. Full court pressure from Toussaint. The pass over to Burton, and now the inbounds will come if they can get it. And turnover. Turnover. Another foul. And another Murray foul. Got it to wow. go. That's supposed to be an and one. They've missed three foul calls in the last minute and a half for Iowa. Two point game. Gilliard trying to dribble out of traffic, and he's fouled by Perkins. I know we're letting them play and decide their own fate. But at some point, you can't be you can't be scared. You can't be scared to blow the whistle. Like, how is that not an and one? That was a hip check in there. How is that not an and one? So you want a coach in the family? Live with the anguish. <laughs> so we're down at two point game with 15.2 to go. And two biggest free throws of this young man's life. And he hasn't been to the free throw line today. Now he is an 85% free throw shooter. First trip for Jacob. He's done everything else but hit free throws tonight. This afternoon, I should say. Calmly rips the first one. I think this is exactly who Richmond wants at the free throw line in this situation. But with 15 seconds left, Iowa doesn't have to hoist up a bad three. You can still get a two and continue to play the free throw game if the two is immediate. This could make it a two possession game right here. And he does calmly. 65 61. Number 12 seed Richmond trying to upset number five seed Iowa. Gilliards going to give Bohannon the foul. That's a smart play right there by Gilliard. I'm telling you, he thinks of everything. What a player. Remember the winner? Goes on to meet Providence on Saturday, right here in Buffalo. Well, it's a two or three. It's got to be quick. They have to get this shot up within the first three seconds. McCaffrey will inbound. He's been their hottest hand from three-point land. He cross courts it to Keegan Murray. Bohannon on a running three. Too short. Rebound. KO had a hand on it. Lost it out of bounds. It'll be Iowa ball with 5.5. And now they need a miracle. Down four. I'm not sure if there's not. I'm not sure if there's enough time. I was going to say if they get fouled on a three-pointer that goes in, but we've already seen that that didn't happen on a three-point shot. 65-61, and they're checking to see if indeed that was off the spiders out of bounds. And if you're Richmond, you're telling. And as we look to see uh, who's this off of, and it's definitely off KO. If you're Richmond, you're telling your squad, hey. No fouls on threes. And if they do score a quick two, do not hustle it in and make, make the big mistake of a quick turnover right underneath our own basket. Right. Take your time. The worst thing you can do is turn it over in your backcourt. If you're going to turn it over or take a chance, throw that thing deep. Make them have to get the ball, then come all the way back down the court. It'll be Connor McCaffrey to inbound for Iowa. Both Murrays are in there, Keegan and Chris. The lob to Keegan on the flush. And that was an excellent play call right there, our friend McCaffrey. So it's down to two with 4.8. That only took 0.7 seconds on this. Pass from Connor McCaffrey to Keegan Murray. And even though they gave up a lob right there, that's still a smart play by Gilliard. Because Gilliard understands if he bumps off at all, they're going to be finding Fran McCaffrey, not Fran McCaffrey, they're going to be finding Bohannon in the corner right there for three. So you want to give up a two, not a three in this situation. Now for Richmond, take care of the ball, hit your free throws, and you will have shot the world. The McCaffreys and the Murrays have been playing ball either together or against each other since they were about five years old. So that pass was in the making for a lot of years from Connor McCaffrey on the lob to Keegan. 
And so 5.2 seconds remaining. And it's Richmond trying to cling to a two point lead. There's going to be all kinds of backcourt pressure here. It'll be Tyler Burton to trigger it on the baseline. He's got Crabtree and Grace in the backcourt with him. Gustafson and Gilliard are way down here past half court, but that'll probably change in a hurry. And here comes Gilliard around. They can't get it to him. They finally do, and he has to give it right back. And he is pushed by Perkins. Boy, that was close. Yeah, I might need to see that one again. Yep. Yeah, there's definitely a push. Got a left hand in there. I think that's it for Perkins. But if you're Iowa, you're thinking to yourself in a sarcastic voice, oh, now you want to blow the whistle on yep. this side of the court. Uh, right. <laughs> <laughs> so Tony Perkins fouls out six points. But Iowa can't hang their heads. It's a two point game, 4.6 seconds. If one of these free throws is off, you will have a chance to tie this ball game up. And you've got great three point shooters pretty much throughout the team. That was Iowa's 10th foul, so Gilliard's going to shoot two. He's hit his last two. And if he gets two more, that should do it. Yeah, two free throws here. Your Richmond, you just run back down the court. Make sure you don't foul. Right. They've changed the clock about three times now. Yep. The officials just came over to let us know. We saw it too, and the truck had it changed for us. But we'll just call it five seconds. How's that? Jacob Gilliard. talked with Chris Mooney he said he's the most instinctive player I've ever had the only guy I can think that was close was T.J. Klein who played about five or six years ago at Richmond Nancy Lieberman's son he said those two are very similar in how they approach the game of basketball if he hits these two free throws they're going to be playing Saturday and uh, nobody expected that he's hitting all nets. This is definitely a surprise with the way Iowa ended the season in the Big Ten. They ended strong, won the Big Ten tournament. One of the hottest teams in the country, a trendy pick to be a Final Four team and even a national championship team. Gilliard's yeah. got one more right here that should do it if he hits it. Otherwise, look out. Plenty of time for Iowa with five seconds, and he just calmly knocks it down. That's it. Now if you're Richmond, just, 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 just back up. Do not let, do not let. The official have a chance to call a foul right here. Just back up. If Richmond didn't win four games in the A-10 tournament, they wouldn't even be here. And now they come in it's as academic. a 12 seed and they call a travel. With two seconds remaining, four-point lead. But you're still in the same situation here if you're Richmond. You want to guard your man, but do not contest at all. By the time they get in and shoot the three, there's not going to be enough time for anything else to happen. And timeout taken by Richmond. So they'll set their final defensive strategy here with two seconds to go. Every, every year they say a five beats a 12, but this wasn't the 5 12 matchup that everybody thought <laughs> that you'd be picking in your bracket. Wow. Like Guess they, it's conceivable that could have been a foul right there on conceivable? Sanford. <laughs> well, you know, they've been letting them play the whole time, so who knows? Yeah, Whatever. It's, it's, this, this last three minutes has gotten a lot, it's gotten real physical. A rugby game is broken up. <laughs> There's the game reset. Most importantly, a four point lead for Richmond. You see the Richmond mascot right here, the Richmond Spider, ready to storm the court and celebrate. He's hype. These fans are hype. Richmond was a six seed in their tournament. They beat Rhode Island, VCU, Dayton, Davidson, 
over the course of the last week or so. And now they're two seconds away from upending Iowa or the Big Ten. And you look at that huddle and you see 20 guys and we said yesterday wow you got 20 guys on the roster. He said so many guys came back for the COVID year to be a part of this moment. What a special moment that is for this group. And a bunch of that group are redshirting because of the age of the guys that are right out there on the floor right now. So they get some experience on the scout team and at practice. Here's the final two seconds with Connor McCaffrey to inbound. Lobs it. It's over Richmond beat Tower. And they advance. A happy group of what are they arachnids uh, whatever <laughs> real happy they needed spiders. all they That's needed all eight legs today to survive Iowa but they do it anyway 67 63 the final and the guy that's been the star of the show pretty much for five years a star again today including the final free throws to ice it and Richmond advances to meet the Friars of Providence on Saturday. Star of the shows with Evan Washburn. Brad, thank you. Well, Jacob, you just pulled off an upset. You guys have won four straight of the A-10 tournament, and now you win in the first round against the fifth seed in Iowa. What's clicked with this team? I mean, we're resilient. You saw it uh, last weekend. You saw it today. Teams are going to make their run, but, you know, we're, we're a battle-tested team. We're pretty confident in ourselves, and, and we think we can beat anybody. What did it take to win this game? Uh, a lot of grit. I mean, they got an uh, All-American over there, a lottery pick. I think Dre did a really good job on them. I mean, it was a team effort, but we locked them down. I mean, I don't know how many points they had, but I'm pretty sure they're under the average, so pretty good defense by us. When you think about everybody who came back, was it for this moment? Yeah, I mean, we're not done yet, uh, but this is, this is why we came back. I mean, the fans have been great. The guys have been great. I mean, this is the energy you love. This is, this is why you play college basketball. Lastly, what can this team do? We can dance. Appreciate you. <laughs> Congrats. I think we held them under their average. <laughs> Jacob tried 21 points under their average. And an upset here in Buffalo. 67 63. The tournament continues with games now on TNT and TBS. True TV returns 7 Eastern tonight with the Nissan NCAA tip off. Then it's Creighton and San Diego State. Coming up next, the impractical jokers after these messages.